Sai Shannon asked Ford, what do you think of India's daughter documentary comment about it? Just some backstory. So the rape that happened a few years back, uh, not that far from here actually, of a young woman that resulted in her death. And, you know, it helped kindle this whole movement of women's rights in India, uh, fighting against rape culture. Uh, but it also had the negative side of making people assume that all Indian men are these sexist, creepy guys. Some years back, there was the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. The American guards were taking selfies, basically, with these tortured inmates of the prison. This is why I don't do those kind of documentaries, period. Whether it's about my own culture or whether it's about uh, other cultures. This is why I don't like a book like Behind the Beautiful Forevers about you know the slum life in India. And the reason I don't like these kind of things is because I don't think they accurately depict what's going on. On the face of it, they seem to. They're telling all the facts, right? I mean, when you look at the microcosm of the situation, yeah, it's, it's true, it's accurate. That film about Abu Ghraib, accurate. Behind the Beautiful Forevers, accurate. This new documentary, India's Daughter, accurate. When you take a macroscopic view of what is actually happening, what is being communicated by said film or said book. It's like giving privileged people a clearly defined enemy. Ah, here's someone we can blame. Here's someone I can click like on Facebook and say, oh yeah, that's wrong. Are you gonna do anything about it? No, but I know someone to blame now. We have our Hitler here and it is Indian men. It is the American military. It is the cops in Mumbai. Uh, these are the kind of topics I don't typically comment on, uh, but I was reading Kavita Krishnan who always has something good to say on these topics. Pretty much, if you want to know about women's issues in India, just read Kavita Krishna. I, and this is what her take on the whole thing was. I arrived early and met Leslie Udwin. This is the lady who's done the film. There for the first time. On meeting me, she asked, have you participated in the protest? I did a bit of a double take. If she didn't know I had participated in the protest, why was she interviewing me? Since she planned to interview me, should she not have done some basic homework about my work, my views, my intervention in the movement? If these didn't matter to her film, what was the perspective of the film? I frankly said some of this to her in suggesting she should do some more homework on the protest and on the women's movement in India. Speaking to her, I realized she wasn't familiar with other movements on gender in India or with the history of the women's movement in India. I do not question her integrity or intention as a person, but I am concerned at the sheer confidence with which a single film made by someone with scant familiarity with the daily decisions, dilemmas, and struggles of India's activists can claim to set the agenda for change in India. Documentaries are too short to tackle these kind of problems. Only the capability to change your mind about one tiny little thing, but they always aim too high. They aim to either change the world or pick a new Hitler for you. To define Hitler within two hours, they have to step on thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, or billions of people in order to do so. Because human nature is such that we want to believe the worst about other people. It is so easy to lie with photo. It is so easy to lie with video. Everyone thinks that if it's on video, then it's true. No, not. You never know what's happening outside of that image. Now with all the post-production, you don't even know if you can trust what's in the image. It's the most manipulative medium ever invented. That's why I agree with Stanley. With great power comes great responsibility. This medium must be treated with respect and fear. So Kavita Krishnan said this on her Facebook page. Our objection to India's daughter is not that India's image will take a beating or that India's sentiments will be hurt. That's a biased and wrong-headed reading of the position women's movements activists have taken. What we're saying is that the global campaign saying rape is an Indian problem is racist. Rape and rape culture are global problems. There are millions of Mukesh Singhs in every country, including India. What we're saying is that it doesn't help Indian women to bypass or shortcut the legal appeals process and replace it by a mob trial by media. We ourselves have spoken in other countries many times about the anti-rape movement and the struggle for women's equality in India. The difference is that we've sought solidarity, not superficial sensationalism that irresponsibly drowns out the concerns we here in India have painstakingly striven to emphasize. All right, uh, what are your thoughts on the film India's Daughter? Please post them below. Until tomorrow, keep it creative, keep it cross-cultural, and keep it constructive, YouTube. Thank you very much.